of the Holy Spirit where the Spirit is at work in ways that the Spirit's not been at work before why? because God works at different times in different places in different ways and we're living these days in a privileged moment of the Holy Spirit and then Pope Paul VI encouraged people similar way in which John the 23rd did and he says, pray without ceasing, with faith and with fervor. Pray without ceasing, with faith and with fervor. Now I think both those words are very important to us today. Because when we look at the journey of the renewal, when we look at what we've been gifted with in the renewal, when we look at what's at the heart of the renewal, we know that we're a people who've been called to get in touch with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've mentioned the ones in Isaiah already this morning, the gifts for personal holiness. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we have the charismatic gifts, the charisms. You know them very well. I'm not going to go into a big teaching there. But I want to pick out one of those nine charisms that somehow seems to slip beneath the radar. And it's the charismatic gift, the charism of faith. Now, I think it slips beneath the radar because maybe when we read that list, we hear about things that we've not heard about before, like the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of discernment of spirits, and it all sounds weird and wonderful, and the gift of faith, and we think, oh, well, we know about that, and we move on quickly. Friends, if we really knew about the charismatic gift of faith, we would be moving in it so dynamically that we'd see a lot of change in the world around us. Because the faith that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's not the faith that leads us to be able to pray with confidence the creed every Sunday. It's not creedal faith, the faith whereby we can state what we believe in. It's the charismatic gift of faith, the charism of faith, which I call expectant faith where we can ask the Lord to visit us. Lord, would you please give us that faith to believe that when things seem impossible, we believe by faith that things are possible. And we've had this expectant faith, we've had, we've had this charism of faith modelled to us throughout the scriptures. We can think of, we, we had the um, Feast of the Annunciation a couple of days ago, didn't we? You know, a young girl going about her everyday life, suddenly she meets an angel. An angel speaks into her life. She has the ears to hear. She has the eyes to see. Praise God. And the angel says, you know, you're going to have a child. Now she's looking, and if she just looks... Humanly speaking, she's not going to understand it. But she draws upon, she embraces, she unwraps, she unpacks this gift of expectant faith, this charism of faith. How can this be possible? Let it be done to me according to your word. Mary was surprised by nothing. And prepared for everything. That's what we're called to be in the charismatic arena. You're surprised by nothing. We hear wonderful stories. We heard that great testimony this morning of that child that was restored to health. Friends, this should be the norm. Not the exception. Our God calls us to move in faith. And I really want to encourage you to embrace, to call upon, to be ready for that gift, that charism of faith, to be more firmly rooted in your life. Because it's the key to what we're going to need for the future. 
And going back to Pope Paul VI, he says, pray with faith and with fervor. Now, you see, fervor goes with that word that I used before the morning, tea, fire. And I'm going to put my rose-colored glasses on and I'm going to say, I remember when we used to be able to praise the Lord for 10 minutes and not get tired. Now, I'm not talking about tired as in your legs might hurt so you sit down. It really doesn't matter whether you praise God standing on your head, sitting down, lying down, standing up, whatever. That, those things are ir irrelevant, aren't they? But we're called to be a people of prayer. And I think one of the keys to real breakthrough in prayer is the gift, again, of praise. We seem to be losing this in some areas of the renewal. We say, let's have a time of praise, and we sing two songs and sit down and get on with the real business of the day. The miraculous, the expectant faith comes out of praise. And praise is not singing two songs. That can lead you into praise. Praise. Let's just remember what we're about. Pray with faith and with fervor. Lord, to whom else shall I go?